Ja. Ja. There we go. Everything is working, and I uh, could not be happier. Welcome to Two Nerds One Quest, everybody. Uh, this is our Dungeons and Dragons weekly session that we're doing uh, every Sunday morning, eight thirty a.m. Central Time. Um, Two Nerds One Quest on Twitter. Uh, that's where you can, if I remember, that's where I will be putting the reminder about the show and about uh, when the shows go up and we are within yeah, the, that was of bad. the podcast well probably within two days of the podcast going live because I have not recorded yeah. an intro to say that we skipped over episode one because session two is going to be the first session that they see because session one was unlistenable well it would have been fine if the audio wouldn't have been out of sync so it even recorded, like, Genius was saying how the uh, video and the audio didn't line up. It's like a bad kung fu movie. But for us, it was fine. In the worst possible um, way. The audio, it translated that way on the yeah audio file. So. so everything was just all, like, you would talk, and then, like, 30 seconds later, I would talk, and then you would already be talking about something else. It was just a mess. There's a lot of innuendo when me and Norm get together. It was together. worse than a bad kung fu movie. Um, so it, yeah. it, uh, fair note to anybody watching for the first time. Hide your time. kids, hide your wife. We're not. Be swearing up in this joint. Totally sweary. <laughs> wife but, friendly, uh, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's wife friendly. Yeah. A lot of innuendo, and there. Well, and we do swear. So, <laughs> hide your hide your kids. I guess I don't know. Yeah. Nah, this is wife friendly. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I mean. My wife doesn't have any interest in it, but for all wives that are interested in husbands. It's so crazy to think we've done so, yeah, five of these already. You'll notice that with this stream, we do a lot of explaining and yeah, ask a lot of questions because I've never done this before. It, this is our sixth session, and this is my sixth session. It was, yeah, well, that's what it felt when we life. did the podcast, too. It's, it's just, Wait. I'm used to... Uh, uh -huh. I had two campaigns running where it's been about last week. every three weeks that we've been playing. So once to be in session six right now, done 100 already. I mean, yeah, that was, this would have been session two in that campaign. So just rolling through this, like steamrolling, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. I think that's most guys. Um, Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> do you want to set up where... Yeah, I, I like doing it weekly better. Aaron on and Ellie <laughs> ended Maybe it's up just me. last week. I... <laughs> yeah. All right. So, at the beginning of last week, uh, Aranon and Ellie were in Nomagard, and they had just almost gotten skewered by a giant crossbow bolt. Um, so, throughout last week's session, vision, yeah. uh, they met with the sure. gentleman, <laughs> I guess you could say, who was... I, I imagine uh, he would have called it a multi-directional crossbow. crossbow. Which was like a 12-pointed... Tower? Maybe? I don't even know what you call it. Cross. Chunk machine? No, no. <laughs> uh, talked to him for a couple minutes went past uh, but oh, you went really you high went up cause to the high level. cask of um, uh, went through the and then the, yeah went the cask the room for like, cask yes it we was were. so we went through there the Oh, we went into a room and talked to a couple yeah, of other gnomes the evil who whiskey then brought fight. us through. And then uh, Ellie turned blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
What's that last one? Yeah, and, and that was last one. Filling in gaps here. Oh, yeah. That's because we had the fight against the evil whiskey. Yep. I just want to know what you remember so I can remind you oh, of things that you right. might have forgotten, such as Holy Ellie crap. being blue. It's amazing how much you forget in a week. Yeah. Ellie. Ellie, yeah, that's... You yeah. really died again. I'm giving you the uh, Reader's Digest version. That's right. Ellie is blue. And uh, fought that mm -hmm. one. Um, went and talked. Oh, yes. Every week, man. I'm scared for this week. Yep. At some point, Get I got to be able to level three. So I have a little bit more life. Talk to um, um, Fiddlestick. Went and talked and, to two gnomes who um, then brought us to. No, I have it in the notes here for the thing. I just. The workshop yeah it's no, actually the workshop um first yep. yep i just have to pull it up because i was on the um i was on where we were going today and not where we've been um did you write it down <laughs> grab a notebook and oh, uh that's take good notes. Notes taking good notes is amazing even when you're playing with that's a fine. group of people i know we're doing a one-on-one -on -one, so me and norm are piecing together and we should probably take better notes to handle this but if I you can really find, find someone Hold on right. a second. if you can find someone within your group that's a good note taker and will take notes i have an amazing note taker in both the campaign i run and um the campaign i play and actually also gotta let the dog out over attack. does phenomenal job taking notes i uh, actually I have two note takers in the campaign i run uh the two ladies in that group are both notebooks full of notes and frequently are going back to him and correcting me on <laughs> stuff. Um, but also, yeah, just even if you're taking notes, just hit the high points, grab names, um, names, titles, um, what you're trying to do. Um, and just stuff that will spark your memory for going forward, what you want to be. Um, what you want to do as a party. I mean, sometimes you go back and you find a note and you can pull a name out of thin air. And if you do that a lot of times, me as a DM, if my players pull some random name out of thin air that would have a correlation to someone they're interacting with, very, very cool to do and see them. I mean, like that makes me feel good. It's like, okay, cool. Well, I've been talking to people while you've been gone. I don't sit in silence. I mean, it's a stream. I don't want anyone to be bored. So I was just talking about the note takers I have in my groups and how the ability to pull a name out of supposed thin air that would have a correlation to this other person All right. is actually a very cool thing as a DM to hear you as a Go player ahead. get involved in the world and understand, remember a name here or there. And not everyone's a note taker. I mean... <laughs> Well, that's what I was saying. When you're taking notes, the, the big things to figure out is, okay, so, like, anytime I would enter a new city, write the city name. Then if you meet the mayor, write mayor in his name. Write shopkeeper, shop's name, I don't shopkeeper's shit. name. Type things. And you just start building this database, basically, of where, what your character knows, where your character has been. So, I mean, it's, it's like going to Chicago for the first time. You don't know where grant park is or anything so you just how do i get there i don't know are you meeting the mayor when you go to chicago the, the also glorious thing we have in this day and age is the internet so is that what i'm Where doing wrong when i go to chicago all that stuff down down already, name? you can just go look it up aaron does not have yeah, the right. internet <laughs> All right. Uh, so you ended up talking with um, Fiddlestib and Dabble Bob, and uh, they Truth both seem to be trying to work right. on some way to All right, let's get the shit show on the road. Handle someone who has lost their mind. Yep.
Which, if anyone out there is following along with the adventure, I did play this yeah, slightly so differently. Yeah, so we just ended so. up back in that room. You just gotta go with it. Back in the secret and room. And sometimes, sometimes you read something and you forget it, and then you go and okay. then you go back uh, and look at it later when you're prepping for the next session. You go, oh, I did that wrong. Norm has no clue what I did wrong. It isn't gonna matter to him. That's the biggest thing. A lot of people are fearful of DMing it. What if I make a mistake? No one's gonna know unless you tell them or they go and look in the adventure themselves. And even if they go look in the adventure themselves, you can always say, Hey, I wanted to, it felt better doing it this way. And I mean there are times I put puzzles in front of players where the player sat there for fifteen minutes trying to figure out a puzzle. Yeah, unless you tell That's them. That's boring. <laughs> Sometimes boring and frustrating when they can't figure it out and it's like okay so yeah pro tip as a dm if you're ever going to do a puzzle go to your brother sister mother father sibling that'd be a brother or sister um child <laughs> find someone in that and present the puzzle to them and have them try and figure it out figure out how long it would take for someone to figure through it and then count that you'd have five people working on it or seven depending on how many you have in your party Anyways, you guys enter the room. There is a gnome sitting glued and tied to a chair. And there is a right. another gnome so sitting on we see this guy the bed, kind of rocking in. back and forth. Face and hands. The, the gnome tied to the chair looks up at you pleadingly, has a gag in his mouth, like a like a, just a rope or cloth tied around his mouth, tied around his head, and looks up at you with pleading eyes and starts, it doesn't vocalize right away, and just kind of looks over at the other gnome sitting on the bed rocking back and forth who doesn't seem to notice you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a quick look around the room mm -hmm. for anything. Um, um, how do I put this? Okay, yeah, make a perception check. For anything that could be a danger to us. Like, I'm going to kind of take a look to see if anybody is, like, hiding anywhere, if there's any place for somebody to hide or, like... A, you aren't walking around you know the mean? room, correct? Any you aren't walking or... around the room? You're just looking around the room from your position? Okay. And, and I'm saying perception check because you're stopping and you're just looking. If you were... Actively walking around the room and lifting stuff up and looking under things, I'd be investigating. What's that? 13. Um, you don't no, notice we anything went in, we around the room. The looking. bed is a mess. Um, and the gnome sitting on the bed seems mm -hmm. to kind of be just like okay. gibbering to himself. Uh, 13. Consistently. Uh, you, you think you hear... Um, um, I, I need to protect people. I need to... Or no, no, he's not saying he needs to protect people. He says I need to protect him. I need to keep... The gnome rocking on the bed. He said I just need to protect him. I need to keep him safe. Maybe if he eats enough, he'll go away. Um, this, but how many more is enough? And it's just kind of talking... Yeah, talking to himself. Like someone who might be a Who's little off their noodle. Okay. What, what they they didn't do anything why is why is why is the king Rich. in the chair tied up like that I mean they well that's what, what these did. are the kings but why why does he have him tied up and, there, and at this point the um the, the one king sitting on the bed kind of looks up at you and says no, no, you must get out. You close the doors, close the doors, close the doors, close the doors. <laughs> it's not. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Um. No. Okay. You're in here. You're. <sighs> you don't change shape, do you? 
And he draws this little dagger out of his side. Uh, Fiddlestib looks at the king and um, Fiddlestib, says, can you, can these, you, can you these are adventurers. Um, how we did, they, they, how we, they came here. How we saved. They, well, why did you come we, here? You know, killed the changeling. You didn't know about them. Or whatever it was. Make a persuasion check. Fifteen. We can talk about that after this. Okay. We, we, need to, we need to fix this situation first. Um, yeah. Um, mm, we, we do need to talk about that because you didn't know about this. So why would you be here 15. otherwise? He, he, he kinda, so he's he's kind of, he's kind of, or she has put herself in between Oh no, fiddle! No, it was Dabble Bob that took you, right? Or Fiddlestib? I thought it was Dabble Bob that took you up there. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely talk about yeah. that after this. Because she was the one doing the straight jacket, <laughs> giving me this side eye. So she kind of puts herself between the kings and you, like social distancing between both of you. <laughs> that... Um, that's oh. gonna timestamp right, this we'll go with that. podcast for people. Years mm -hmm. down the line, if anyone finds it. Um, um, yeah, um, your Majesty, your, um, they killed the, um, shape changer. Yeah, right. Thing. They they have. Do you still have the proof? The piece. It's gross. <laughs> Can't take this lump of, like a, foot thing out and said it and he kind of looks at it and is what is yeah I'm going to show him is that it that that must be it that is uh I don't know. Where's the dead thing? I see it. I was trying to. I was trying to fill that. <laughs> well, they have this. Hold that thought. I'm looking at something in my audio. They have Genius the body. It. It's back down behind. on the other side of the city. In one of the tunnels. It's still there. The guards were taking care of it. So they have it. We could show it to you, Your Majesty. I, um, I need to see it. Will you go have them bring it in? Um. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, Your Majesty. And uh, Devil Bob kind of bows and bows, backing out of the room slowly, leaving the two of you with the uh, with the kings. Um, All right, well, and maybe it's that gonna have to filter thing you put on. Do with it. it looks like I'm not really to block out your fan. I don't know. Dropping any oh, you didn't? or anything oh, okay. or on my side, so I thought you had that I'm on. Not sure what the deal is. So <clears throat> you are left in the room for a scant no, even few seconds. No, that's still um when no. through another door comes like four gnomes with pikes dressed in armor like guards and they just come in and they stand along the room almost like they were sent back in because you weren't trusted to be left alone with the kings which when you think about it honestly makes some sense 
um, based on the questioning that you got about why you were actually here. They have moved up and they have put themselves in a position between you and the two kings. Both of you and Ellie and the two kings. Yeah. I'm just going to kind of... Um, they're behind me? There is a, there's a dresser and um, a like place to wash up, like a wash basin slash vanity type. Is there thing. anything else in the room? Like, other um, than just, like, the You don't notice anything like, is out in the open. Or anything, any that would be... Shiny objects? I mean, there's some cups there and stuff, but they're... Everything is very, um, earthy and kind of mundane. It's not very decorative. It's nicer than the other stuff you've seen in this area, but these gnomes are very, uh, earth based the earth dwell they aren't they aren't dwarves who are making grand constructs of um like finely carved stone or gems or anything like that the gnomes are more interested in making um contraptions and uh different like items magical items and whatnot but nothing sits out in the open Okay. You do that. 